Hi, welcome to module six of lecture 10. In the previous module, we dealt with some more typical um, operations that you might have heard of before, like multiplication and addition. Here we're gonna deal with a couple that are less commonly seen outside of matrix um, operations. The first you're gonna see pretty rarely, but it's included here because it comes up sometimes when you're dealing with eigenvalues, um, and it's called the trace. The trace of a matrix A, and almost always defined just for a square matrix, even though it doesn't have to be in theory, the trace of A, the whole word is trace, is the sum of all diagonal elements. So it's over i, so it's a11 plus a22, and so on, into a n n. That's it. The trace equals the sum of the eigenvalues of a matrix, and that's why you see it sometimes, but we'll talk about that maybe a little bit more when we get to eigenvalues in a couple lectures from now. That's it for trace. <laughs> okay. That was the easy part. Now the harder part is the determinant of a matrix. The determinant of a matrix is useful for one primary reason, which is it tells you whether or not the matrix is singular. A singular matrix does not have an inverse, and that can be often be important. If the determinant of a matrix is zero, it is singular and has no inverse. If it's non-zero, it has an inverse. It determines whether or not it has an inverse. So can, yes, I can remember this. That's how you can remember this thing. Um, we offer a determinant of A as this. It looks like an absolute value. It's important to distinguish it, though, from an absolute value because the determinant of a matrix can be negative. Sometimes we'll just write det A. We'll do both. Um, I'll mostly write on this screen this thing because it's quicker to write. So how do you compute this thing? <laughs> well, the two by two case is pretty straightforward. And I should say the determinant is only computable for square matrices. So we're only gonna compute this for square matrices. So um, how do we do this? Well, for two by two, the determinant of A, determinant of say A11, A12, A21, A22, just get a little stamp, it just does that for me, is really easy to calculate. And people usually just memorize this. It's the things along the diagonal multiplied together. So A11 times A22 minus things off the diagonal multiplied together. So A12, A21. There you go. That is the um, formula for the determinant of a two by two matrix. So if we put numbers in there, if the matrix is two, three, one, four, then the determinant is two times four minus, it should be times, uh, 3 times 1, which equals 8 minus 3, or 5. Okay. Um, I could do it in a different one, where it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and there would be 1 times 2 minus 3 times 4, or negative 10. Determinant can be positive or negative. Um, and I'll do one more example of 2 by 2. This one would be 2 times 3 minus 2 times 3 equals 0. This matrix is singular. You can also tell that by the fact that the two rows are exactly the same, <laughs> um, but they don't need to be. You can come up with ones that are singular for reasons of not being exactly the same. So for instance, if the first one is a multiple of the second one, or vice versa, here is 2 times 6 minus 3 times 4, which is also 0. So the determinant being zero is related to the the um, rows or the columns of the vector being uh, multiples of each other, of being the same row, of, of being um, parallel instead of perpendicular. Okay, collinear, to use the words we did before. Okay, so there you go for this. Um, now again, related to the dot product. So this determinant of a two by two matrix. That's all there is to that. Now, the tricky part is for a bigger matrix. Now, for a 3 by 3, there's another um, sort of convenient way of looking at this, which is the butterfly method, um, in which you take a matrix that's 3 by 3, A11, A12, A13, and I'm sick of writing these things out on the screen because it's uncomfortable for me, frankly, but it's fine. Um, so you get a stamp for this, little A3 whatevers. Matrices, matrices. Um, there's that. 
Now, if you want to get the determinant of this thing, one convenient way of doing this is to first kind of write, repeat these over here, these last two rows. And first, it, do the um, blue one. So this blue one, this blue one, and this blue one give you the pluses. So this means it's A11, A22, A33, plus A12, A23, A31, plus A13, A21, A32. So this would be um, the, the, um, the pluses. And then you would subtract from that the minuses, which would be this and this and this. So that's A31, A22, A13, minus, those are A's, not 9's, sorry. Um, A11, A23, A32, minus A12, A21, A33. And that's called um, the rule of Cyrus or the butterfly method. And it's a way to quickly do a three by three matrix determinant if you want to do that. Um, it requires you to just do this pattern. And this is a convenient way to memorize it. If you don't want to memorize anything, you can just remember that the pattern exists. I guess there's kind of like a butterfly. I don't know. But that's the method. Um, for gener in general, we want to use a, have a more general method. And we use what's called the, the PLOS expansion. The PLOS. It doesn't really matter. Um, Laplace expansion is taking a value of space. Laplace expansion, in which you choose a row or column of the matrix and expand out around that row or column to figure out the, the determinant of the matrix. So let's see how that works. Um, so I have matrix A, and let's say the matrix A is going to be um, 1, 0, 5, 2, 1, 3, 1, 1, 0. Okay, and then start by expanding over the first row. So we're gonna expand over this row right here. What you do is you first figure out what the submatrices are of each element in that row. Now I call a submatrix is the matrix you get when you, when you remove the row and column corresponding to an individual element. So for instance, the submatrix for one is this matrix right here. And then you can do it for two and for three as well. Now what we need to know is not just the submatrix, but the determinant of the submatrix. The minor of an element of a matrix is the determinant of that element's submatrix. So the minor of um, one here says so a11, to remind you, is the determinant of this matrix right here. Now we just figure out how to do that. It's the diagonals multiplied together minus the, the off diagonals multiplied together. So that's 1 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times 3 is 3. So this is negative 3. So the minor, in this case, of 1 is negative 3. The minor of 2, which here is a12, is going to be the, what you get if you remove the first row, the first row and the second column, which leaves you with 0, 1, 5, 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 5 is negative 5. That equals negative 5. Sorry, 1 times 5 is 5, so it's 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And finally, the minor of 1, now we're talking about A13, is the determinant of the matrix you get, the submatrix for that element, which is what you get if you remove the first row and the last column. So it's 0, 1, 5, 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 1 times 5 is, negative, is 5. So it's 0 minus 5. And you get negative 5. Okay. So. That takes care of the minors of this thing. Now, um, what do we do with them? 
Well, now we convert the minors to cofactors. The cofactor of an element is the minor of that element times negative 1 to the i plus j. So it's the cofactor of that element times either 1 or negative 1 based on the position of that element in the matrix. So the cofactor of so the cofactor of a11 is negative 1 times 1 plus to the 1 plus 1 power so it's negative 1 squared is just 1 times negative 3 equals negative 3 the cofactor of a12 is negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 that's negative 1 to the third which is negative 1 times negative 5, so negative 1 times negative 5 is 5, so we flip that sign, and the cofactor of a13 um, is, is, is those are the ij's, <laughs> um, negative 1 to the 1 plus 3, that's negative 1 to the 4th, which is 1, times negative 5 is negative 5, so we only flip the sign of the middle one. And that's most of it, and now to finish off, the overall determinant in this case, expanding across the first row, is the element times its cofactor. Um, and I'll write the one ones down here to be clearer. It's the cofactor of each one. Plus the next element times the cofactor. Plus the last element times the cofactor. That equals 1 times negative 3. Plus a12 is 2 times 5 plus 1 times negative 5. We get negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8. 2 times 5 is 10. So the overall thing is 2. So the determinant of this matrix is 2. Now, this works for any, um, and there's more examples of this in, in the problem sessions, the problem sets, so you can do more practice. This works for any. Um, any matrix of any size, any square matrix of any size, and you can use any row and any column to expand. So oftentimes, it's better to actually choose a different row or column that has more zeros in it. Why? Because up here, in the red, when you're multiplying by the cofact by the um, elements themselves, if the elements are zero, that term is zero, and you don't need to do anything. So you can avoid even computing that cofactor for that element if the element itself is zero. So if I can fit it in the bottom of the screen here, we can do the exact same thing now, but let's use the um, first column instead. And again, it could be the second column or third column. It doesn't matter. But let's use the first column in this case. Well, in the first column, we only have two cofactors that are not zero. The one for one, one, and the one for, and the one for three, one. Right? The one for one and the one for five. So we can do those. The minor of one um, of the first one, we have already done. So that's still negative 3, and the cofactor is negative 3. So the whole determinant of A in this case is going to be um, 1 times negative 3. That hasn't changed. The next cofactor we haven't calculated. It's, the, it's 2, 1. It's the cofactor for, for the second row first column. But its element is 0, so I don't care what this is. I'm not going to calculate it. So that's just 0. And the last one is going to be 5 times the cofactor for the 3, 1. For the one where you get, we remove the last row on the first column. So that's the determinant of 2, 1, 1, 1. That equals 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 equals 1. So um, that's the minor is 1 negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 power is negative 1 to the 4th is 1. So the cofactor is also 1. So we plug in 1 here, and we end up with negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And we see we have the exact same answer by expanding across the first column instead of the first row. And if you were really bored or really wanted to practice, you could go and expand across every row and every column of this matrix and see that this works for no matter what you do. Um, so in practice, when you're calculating these things, you want to find the rows of the columns with the most zeros in it and expand on that one. Save yourself some effort. That's it.
That covers determinants, and again, the point of determinants is to determine whether or not you can invert a matrix. That's it. Um, in the next module, what we're going to do is kind of put some things together and give you some general properties of determinants and traces and such to help you um, keep track of ways to manipulate your matrices without having to actually compute stuff all the time. And again, there are more examples of this in the problem sessions and the problem sets to, to practice with. Thank you very much.